allow me to start this by indulging in something that I refrain from doing in the cinema out of solidarity with my fellow audience members. Yeah, again with the eyes! Yeah, another one! What is that, four, five? Burton, what is with the eye stabbing in this movie? Thank you. Seriously though, I'm not squeamish about violence, but didn't people and creatures get stabbed in the eyes like four or five times in this? I think part of the problem with the film is that these characters, which were so bizarre and imaginative and so unlike what we could relate to, are now revisited as opposed to reinterpreted because the entire premise is we've been there before, Alice has been there before, we already know the story, this is what happens after. And as a result, so much of what these characters do and say are like references or it's, you know, part of their trademark or something. I mean, am I the only one who thought that Off With Her Head or variations thereof was said way too many times in this? I mean, I'm not going to claim that all of them were bad. I, the frog bit, for example, was kind of funny. But yeah, for example, the rabbit is just constantly worried about being late or you know, worried and nervous and anxious and and that's all. There's there's nothing else to it. Also, and this might just be me, I thought it was awkward when Alice sitting next to the, the Red Queen prompted the Hatter to, you know, stop babbling. I thought she was gonna accidentally give herself away by doing that. On the subject of her being given away, when the mouse finally says Alice and not, you know, not the real Alice, not that Alice. I thought that there was going to be a little bit more, a little bit more focus on that, hey, you actually called her Alice. And not merely on the fact that she had been, and not merely on the fact that she had now been given away, because Crispin was already there to take her away. You know, the off with her head order had already been given. I thought that a couple of times characters seemed to just behave the way the plot needed them to. I didn't get why the dog suddenly just followed Alice's orders. I mean, you know, the, the sit bit was a little funny and I didn't have any problems with that, but, you know, he's like saying, you can't do that, that's against your destiny, and then she just says, but I'm gonna, and then he helps her. I, I don't get that. I, I think there should have been some discussion, some persuasion, something. Did anyone else think it was too bad that the dragon only had, like, one line? I mean, you give it the voice of Saruman and you give it one line? Seriously? I don't think that the whole prophecy thing really worked. The sword didn't seem to have any specific power. And the armor, I don't know, maybe it was just me who presumed that there'd be something special to the armor. I mean, the Queen said, now the armor is complete, you know, now we just need the knight. I mean, was it just a regular, you know, suit of armor and she just, you know, pointed to one out of many and said, okay, that should be the one, now we just need the sword. The film doesn't really seem to explain why it needed to be Alice who fulfilled the prophecy, other than she needed to be there, otherwise it couldn't have her name in the title. And it also seems weird that the Cheshire Cat can't just, you know, teleport, transport himself to where the sword is, get it, and that's it. I mean, they were supposed to be sort of a resistance force, weren't they? I mean, how disjointed of a resistance force were they? I think it would also have been nice if the old chessboard set up and the armies approaching each other had been used for more than just a visual. Now some of you may be thinking that I hated this film, and I really didn't. It just underwhelmed me, that's really all. I've seen I've seen Burton and Depp do better elsewhere, and everyone else in the cast have been in superior productions. I would like to mention a few bits that I really did enjoy. I really liked how the Red Queen was this decadent, opulent, whatever she felt like. I mean, you know, a warm pig to put her feet on. 
a, a little monkey to hold the seat for her guest and her tables and her response when the frog pleads for his life saying, you know, I have a wife and kids is, you know, hey, bring me them too, I'd like to eat them. I think that's what she meant to do anyway. I liked how after we've seen how this second trip down the rabbit hole, the drink to get smaller and the cake to get bigger, sometimes make her a little too big or a little too small. How she was suddenly really tall uh, in front of the queen and how she came up with an explanation going off of the rabbit saying, um, I like the repeat image of her in front of a crowd of people having to make a difficult decision suddenly. I like that this didn't feel the need to completely destroy Hamish. I thought that her speeches to everybody and the ending in general was pretty good. It worked. I didn't mind the dancing. It got a chuckle out of me. And I think the off with your head with the dragon worked. That's it for this one. See you next time.